What's happening guys? I hope everybody had a fantastic weekend. We have another Sunday a video coming at you for August 21st and the week ahead. I have a busy week coming up. Uh, I should be around for the most part, but you know, it's just kind of in between everything. Sunday night, uh, there's like a little bit of a pre-party for uh, my buddy who is having a thick, I think it's called a hundred day party or, or whatever for the, uh, for his newborn. Um, which I'm excited about because I'm going to see a couple other uh, old friends that are flying in from uh, the West Coast that are in the trading industry as well. Um, so that will be good as well as some coming up from New York, which I haven't seen in a while. Um, so that should be a good time. And then on Thursday and Friday and Saturday, um, we have a bunch of stuff. So um, as you guys know, uh, the Clover event is Saturday through Tuesday. And uh, I'll be there on Saturday speaking, but Friday we're doing the meetup, uh, which obviously we, we talked about. I think there might be, it's probably sold out, but there might be one or two tickets left. I don't know. Um, I'd have to check the website. I didn't before this. Maybe I should have. Um, and then Zach's going to be in town the day before on Thursday. And I'm going to try to get out uh, off desk around, I don't know, 11 or 12 and um, kind of venture around New Hampshire and, and you know, kind of make a, a, a nice video for, you know, what we've got coming up. And I haven't really told everybody exactly what's happening on, I think it's September 15th. Let me just double check here. No, it's September 17th because I keep on screwing that up. Yeah, September 17th. So I uh, was able to put something together. Uh, which I'm going to be sharing in Las Vegas and, and we're going to kind of make a video into that as well as September 17th and then we will share it in Vegas and then the rest of the world but we're pretty excited uh, and it's all about networking it's all about connections and you know kind of putting people together and uh, you'll be pretty impressed with uh, what is happening um, so that's that but just like the Chicago uh, video with Lance and just like the Boston event with um, Lance and Greg and is it just me? I don't remember if there was three or four. Um, I apologize if there was a fourth one in there, but I don't think there was. Um, but, uh, and then we did another one out in um, Arizona and then another one with San Diego and Sandro, if you guys remember that. So, Another one of those is coming. Uh, it should be fun. We'll see what happens, but busy week. Um, all right, so let's see. Going through my notes. All right, first and foremost, free month of IU, X-E-N Rail, Zen Rail. Uh, you've got the free month of IU t-shirts, YouTube, Leo Break 3115, YouTube, Bella and Bo Rain sound effects. And then on Twitter, on trades 11. Um, so, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for commenting. And uh, hopefully, once again, you do the same thing. Uh, before I get into the video topics for tonight, um, and I'm saying tonight, well, I guess it is. It's about 6 p.m., but I'm recording this on Saturday. Um, I want to ask you guys for some topics and some thoughts and some things that you would like me to go over. Um, just, I, I want to brainstorm a little bit. I want to make sure that this content is fresh. And sometimes when, you know, the market shifts a lot and when it's just kind of the same old, same old, I don't want to keep repeating myself. I don't want to keep saying the same thing over and over. I don't need to uh, try to help prepare you for the change in the market environment because it's been the same. It's continuing to be the same. Um, you know, I think the only difference this week was maybe, obviously we've been selling off, but coming in maybe from a, ideally some sort of, uh, you know, flush out or, or capitulation type trade for the bounce, right? And we kind of had a, a structured bounce on, on Friday. I mean, it, it opened week and then slowly came back and I would expect a lot of those. I would expect uh, a lot of reversals, then sell off, reversal and sell off. Um, but at some point, we're going to just have that steady grind day. And in my opinion, you should have that basket ready, you know. And I went over, you know, the short basket about a month, a month and a half ago of if 
and when we pull back on the SPY, what to watch, right? UPST, UPLTR, IONQ, NEO, XPEV, you know, all the high flyers are going to produce better onlines than, you know, your SPY or your, your typical indexes or your ETFs, right? And if you don't want that single name risk, one thing that I probably should have maybe focused more on, which I love... Uh, Josh Cherniak had posted it one time, but just pull up ARK, A-R-K-K. -K. And it is such, and, and I guess maybe even Tesla too, because I, I, obviously she owns a lot of that. But um, I always used to use kind of Tesla as that euphoric index, right? If this thing's going crazy, everybody's going to be chasing everything. Just like in small cap land. If, if everything's going nuts, everybody's going to be chasing anything that has a pulse. And same thing, if, if Tesla's unwinding, then, you know, UPST and you, and they have nothing to do with each other, but there's a good chance that they're going to be a kind of unwinding because Tesla or ARC is sort of that, in my opinion, the euphoric kind of action index. And so one thing that Josh uh, Cherniak had said a couple, maybe a month ago, a month and a half ago is, you know, anytime ARC is, is ramping, you know, he's, he's not even looking for an unwind in not even the small caps, but the, the mid and the large cap names that are, you know, the, the, the high flyers. But when that shifts and ARC is unwinding, I mean, you've got, uh, I don't know, two dozen, three dozen different names to, to pick from. So that's the important uh, part of, of following that basket of names. So you kind of always have an idea of, you know, maybe where you could focus uh, instead of just your normal day in and day out sort of, of traits. More of a macro perspective, bigger picture kind of look. Um, so anyway, I thought that was uh, worth noting. And it's probably something that I, I fumbled a, a million times over with, with exactly how it went up and came down. And if you look at every other chart, it's the same. Um, but that's that. Video topics that I wanted to talk about tonight, uh, Avidity Fitness. I haven't mentioned it in a while. Um, Zach's awesome. He is my trainer. And uh, as you guys know, if you're part of IU, there's always the Zoom login information, which I am updating right now. Um, and I got the new information for it uh, because it did change. Uh, somebody let me know this morning. But, um, you know, if you're part of IU, check that calendar. Every Tuesday and Thursday at 6 p.m. And then every Saturday and Sunday at 9, 10 a.m. Because he has an 8 to 9 in-person class. Uh, and just in case, you know, that obviously people like to talk after and stuff. So we got a 10-minute buffer. So 9, 10 a.m. every Saturday and Sunday. Uh, and so as always, going into Vegas, uh, I wanted to do something special. So I'm going to have a sign-up form. Sign-up form is just going to be your name and an email. And I'll have uh, either me or Zach will email you and send you the information that you need. And so the Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday are virtual. They're through Zoom and you don't need weights, um, but you, you obviously can. He'll, he'll always give you a, a weighted exercise if we're using weights and then also uh, something that you can do similar with just body weight. And that could be, you know, just... Uh, body weight squats or push-ups or, or whatever. But if you wanted to challenge yourself with weights, then obviously you can. Um, but these are always great, especially like if I'm away on the weekends and you know, I'm up north or something at the beach or the lake, etc. I'm not going to a gym there. And, you know, it's very easy to fall uh, out of, uh, not necessarily shape, but, you know, you get out of your rhythm um, pretty quickly if, uh, if you aren't staying accountable. So, you know, I have to surround people, uh, you know, with all my weaknesses, I have to surround people, you know, around me with uh, their strengths and, and impact me, right? And so that's why I always count on him to, to keep me there. And I know I got to set my alarm clock. I got to be there in the morning. I do it every Tuesday and Thursday at 6 a.m. Um, and, uh, you know, Saturday and Sunday, typically I've been getting into it a little bit more. I used to go four days a week, but it's hard with the kids. Now I'm going 7 a.m.s on the, the weekends as well. That said, everybody that signs up that will go over the next four weeks, actually, uh, yeah, four weeks, 
uh, you've got to go to 80% of the sessions. So I think there is 4, 8, 12, 16, 16, and you can miss three. So if you go and you go to 13 out of 16 of the sessions, then I'm going to donate 500 bucks to Traders for a Cause for the Vegas event. And as always, you know, I'll be sponsoring, so I will have tickets. And I will pick two people that stick it through, that do them all, and can go to Vegas. So we'll pick two winners, and then everybody else that goes to 80% of the, I don't know what you call them, sessions, $500 to Traders for a Cause. So there will be a link. I want you guys to, you know, get out of your comfort zone. Just come, if you're, if you're worried about the camera, keep the camera off. I don't care. Um, but it's a great spot to be. It's a great place to be because there's a lot of traders on there. You start to create relationships and meet people outside of their usernames, you know, their aliases online. And uh, there's a lot of great people out there. And you're not going to know that. You're not going to learn that. Uh, unless, you know, you put yourself in a situation like this or you put yourself in a situation where you go to a meetup, you go to the, the boot camps, you go to Traders for a Cause, uh, etc. And in my opinion, that really excels people's careers. You got to get in the room with the right people. And it doesn't matter p l wise or, or, or whatever. It's, it's all about, you know, the motivation, the connections, the, the shoulders to lean on when you need to. Uh, and then the high fives when you want, you know, and, and that's what it's about. And all of my close, close friends in the trading industry, I've met in person. I've met traders for a cause and you seal, you really seal those relationships over time. So um, don't underestimate it, show up, do it. And I hope to see a bunch of you guys there. Uh, next up on video topics, I had uh, Kim breakthrough question mark. You know, I've been working with Kim Ann Curtin for a while. Um, and I am most of the time, pretty much a stone, you know, uh, emotionless. Um, you know, it's very tough that that's what has created, you know, where I've, where I've got that that's what, for 20 years, you know, it's, it's an emotional roller coaster, but if you are emotional about it, you're not going to get anywhere. Right. Um, so it, there's been a lot of just kind of, you know, stone cold, emotionless kind of, you know, action from me. And, you know, that's something that, you know, I, I'm not, I, I don't want, you know, the rest of my life. And, and I look at where I'm at and the decisions that I've made. And, you know, you want to always kind of take yourself out and, and reevaluate. Are you where you want to be? Are you where you thought you wanted to be? And I've checked off so many boxes that I never thought maybe I would. But, you know, I am still going for, you know, let's just say dad of the year award, you know, and, and things like that. And my daughter, you know, just like that is seven years old. And I know that if I don't make certain changes over the next couple of years, I'm going to look back and I'm, you know, I just turned 38. I'm going to be 40, 45, 50. And it goes like that, just like my daughter going from, you know, being born to, to seven. So that's my success now right and that's where i want to be and you know sometimes you need to find you, you need to talk to somebody that can kind of help you you know guide you find that balance and uh you know beyond maybe just your own you know wife or, or husband or whatever it may be family members you know you want to talk to somebody else to kind of help you break through to get to exactly where you want to be which is really what your true success uh, and your goals are. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm always a pain in the ass and, and I think she finally, you know, cracked that, that code and, and some, some of the pressures, um, that, you know, I, I put on myself, um, uh, because, you know, look, I, you, it's got my name on it. I always want to give it 110%. And, um, you know, it's, at some point, you know, my, my goal was to create a community, but, uh, you know, there, there's probably 50% of the days this year, I probably wouldn't have traded. You know, and, and, you know, I've, I've sized way down this year trying to find that balance. And, you know, I, I think it's important to talk about just because, you know, there's new traders that are watching this video, but then there's also a, a whole bunch of other traders that maybe are going through the same thing. And the more that I've talked about it with different people, 
everybody else is in the same position that's been in this and, and found success and, and done that. And it's just always chasing, 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 chasing. And so this year's for me has really been about, you know, literally checking off the dad of the year award. Um, and I don't want to be uh, the, the, the one that's always absent, right? And, and I haven't been, I, I think I'm a pretty good dad and husband, um, but I know that I could be way better and I don't want to have regrets. And so that's why I went to Kim and said, hey, you know what? <laughs> I, I'm so lopsided of, over here and I need to, you know, kind of figure out that balance. And uh, in my opinion, she's been helpful. So um, anyway, we do, we do uh, a session with her once a week in IU. Um, but I think it's important and most people don't talk about it. Most people, you know, don't explore it. Um, but it took me literally three months <laughs> to even crack the code of, you know, maybe making progress. And, and I think that's the big issue is in trading, we all want instant gratification. We all want to be, you know, fix it right away. Whether it's a loss, you make it back right away, whatever it may be. And so when I talked to Kim the first couple of times, I mean, okay, it was a good conversation, but like, I didn't really feel like I progressed. And then, you know, we do it a few more times and I, I tried something, failed, tried something, failed. And then finally have some sort of kind of breakthrough and realization. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't have done that without her. So um, think about it. Just a, just a thought. Like I said, Traders for Cause Boston this week. That's going to be awesome. Uh, Clover event is on Saturday. I said that. And then uh, one other note that I had was fixing a mistake that I've been making. And, you know, I always like to use these videos as, you know, I go over all my biggest losses, you know, obviously Kodak and AMC. And I had, when I had the AMC uh, loss after loss after loss, I wore my neck shirt and uh, talked about it on Sunday video about how, you know, I'm, I'm going to, you know, it, it doesn't matter. It happened. There's nothing I can do about it and how I plan to, you know, kind of, either grind back or get back to business the, the next the next day. So that said, I wanted, you know, I, I kind of put my finger on a on a mistake that I've I've been making in this market. And again, like I said, this year has been more about, you know, taking a step back and and kind of figuring out, you know, my next step. And uh, one of the issues that I've been talking about on scan quite often is where I've been minimizing like crazy, right? Where I've got this great trade and then it starts to come back. And, you know, I, I got this great trade and I oversize. And then I end up minimizing. It was a great trade, but then too much size and I'm either uh, making good trade, stopping out for flat or turning it into a loser. Multiple times. Most of the time it's just stopping out for, for flat, kind of treading water on, on certain trades. So what I've thought about and what I've realized over the last kind of week is, you know, less is more. Like I always, I preach, but in this case, I don't always need to scale, 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 and get the most out of a trade because not only do you raise your, your single stock risk in that situation, but you bring out the emotions, you bring out all these different things that will impact the trade. So for example, this NVOS trade this week, you know, I started in, I had a, an amazing entry. I waited for it to exhaust out. And, and I think the top was 26 and change. And I, I started in at 26. Uh, I think it maybe went 26, 8, 20, 27, I don't know. But whatever it was, it was like a half a cent to a cent up the highs, which I, I don't need the top. Um, because, you know, the top, if you're wrong, it's, you know, you're, you're early. So I always wait to see the exhaustion move. And then I start in. But then I want to be, you know, uh, uh, convinced that I'm right. And if I'm not convinced that I'm right, then I'm not going to scale. I'll stay in with a starter or move on. And then if I see the same move again and it fails, I'll scale and scale and scale. And so I had this like real strong bias that, you know, it's going to unwind the rest of the day. Got an amazing entry, 26, 25, 24s. My average is, you know, right up there, 25, 24, 5, something like that. Then it starts to fade, 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 fade. And I'm, I'm scaling at 20 and 19 and 18. And it goes to 17.5 and I see it soak. Comes back up, comes back down to 17.5. I see it soak. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I see that. 
but I'm sized. I'm, I'm sized up on that trade. And in my mind, it's, it's going to, you know, 15 and then 10 and it's going to be a great trade. And then it starts to rally back up. And I ignored the 17.5 soak, the 17.5, the 18, the 18.5. And then I'm like, ah, all right, maybe I'll start to bid for it. And then as soon as they see me kind of starting to, to bid for stock, um, starts to go the other way. Swipes up two cents, swipes up two cents. I end up stopping out basically flat, right? And, you know, I ended up rescaling in. It ended up being an okay trade, but it was a perfect example of... Why am I still scaling at 20 and 19 and 18? You know, I, I, it's not greed, but it's just I'm trying to, to get the most out of this. And you don't always need to milk every last dime out of names. Protect your average. You know, get in there and let the trade work for, me, for you. You know, it could have even rebounded back up to those 22, 23s. And I would have been completely unemotional and let that trade work. But instead, you know, I sized up, sized up, sized up. And what I said in the room was that now I was forced to cover. Not, not covering because that was the trade plan, not covering because that's what I wanted to do, and that was the plan. It's because I was forced to do I didn't want to turn into a big loser. You know, and some of those things, they go up five, 10 cents real quick, right? So I wanted to protect. There was a huge offer, I swiped it. I'm like, you know what, that's fine. It is what it is, at least I protect it if it goes up. Great, if it starts to stay heavy, I'll get back in. And I did, and it ended up fading, and it did what I thought. But I don't need that stress. I don't need that extra size. And that forced me out at a, a level that I didn't want. And it was more of a, I'm stopping out to protect myself rather than I'm covering because that was my plan. That's my goal, right? And so I thought that was important, and so... Later on in the week, the, the last two days of the week anyway, you know, I just did exactly that. Way better, way cleaner, way less stress. Uh, and like I've said a million times, my goal is to be able to just get off desk whenever I want in positions. I don't want to be in a position where I'm literally just sitting there and like, oh man, oh man, I, I can't move. I can't move. Those, those days are over. I'm done with that. I don't care about that. I don't need to make a zillion dollars. I just want to continue to do what I do and, you know, trade well each day and then focus on those A plus setup days. That's all I want, the A plus setup days. And if there's nothing there, I don't really want to push a lot of buttons. So anyway, I hope that helps uh, somebody. That was one issue that I was starting to kind of develop and, you know, I just wanted to, to stop it in its track before it became a, a real issue. Because that progresses to something else, to something else, and then you get into a low float kind of situation, which, uh, as you guys know, I don't even bother with uh, the majority of those. And if I do, I'm trading very, very small um, because it's just not worth it. You're going to make money eight, nine out of 10 times, and then that 10th time, circuit, 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 um, and it's just not worth it. So anyway, that's that. Reminder, it's always just you versus you. Just because somebody else is making more, just because you see it on Twitter, just because, you know, all these different things. You got to figure out what works for you and what your goals are, you know? And, and just like I said earlier, you know, what my goals now are is, you know, pulling myself away from this, this, this focus, this extreme focus every single day, every single hour and really live, right? Are you trading to live or are you living to trade really ask yourself that i did and i wasn't happy with the the answer so that's why i started to talk to kim that's why i'm sharing my journey as i always do you know the the good stuff the bad stuff uh and uh you know i i think that it will be helpful for a lot of you guys so um that's all i was gonna say and i think i said before but in case i didn't uh, post questions, I did say it, but post questions that you'd like me to cover, you know, topics that you'd like me to cover, uh, questions you guys have, things that are, are confusing. I got a lot of comments last time that you guys are loving the educational kind of, uh, that, that it just keeps getting better and better and better when I start to break down things and explain things. Um, and by doing this over and over, I get better at explaining things. You know, sometimes when I first started, I used to kind of assume people were in my head and they understood what I was talking about uh, and not fully explain stuff. 
but you know, make sure ask, you know, and, and, and post that stuff on the, on the comment section and, and, um, tell me what you think would be beneficial, what you'd like to hear more about. And I'm going to work towards answering some of those, uh, until the next market shift. And then we'll talk about that for a little while and we'll get back to the questions. So let's get into scan for the week ahead. All right, guys, so as always, I am not a financial advisor. These are not buy or sell recommendations, and this is for educational and informational purposes only. If you're not okay with that, shut the video off. If you're good, let's get to it. Now, he, he is kind of like top and yell, uh, where, you know, it's, it's headline to headline, and, and uh, maybe, maybe most of the headlines are out now uh, after the news uh, last week, but... Either way, I still kind of apply the same concept where I don't mind trading the big moves, you know, like this action or it's starting to set up for a long, but I don't want to stay. I don't want to look for a trade all day and just because there's headline risk and things like that. Just like Yell, you know, you could have been fading that all day and it was a perfect unwind and then it just random swipe. I think we talked about it last week with the tweet, um, same deal with Top and all that kind of stuff. Anytime that there's just, you know, 90% chance of headline risk. Uh, I want to, I'll still trade them, but I want to just in and out. It doesn't need to be a split second, but I just want to limit my risk to maybe a five to 20 minute window, something like that, instead of, all right, I'd like to stay in this all day and I think X, Y, Z, and then randomly at, at 1 p.m., 2 p.m., some some headline comes out. Obviously, there's always going to be risk on any name, market risk, headline risk. But when there's a, an elevated uh, headline risk, I, I prefer just to react to the, the big moves um, or after that headline comes out. So we did have a couple of those opportunities and it was nice. So on a, on a situation like this, I'm thinking two, two ways. And just like I said last week, you know, I'm not trying to make a call one way or the other. I'm trying to come prepared for two situations. If you come to that fork in the road, you know, which, what, what's your plan? Which way you're going to go? And um, so for he, I'd either like to see some sort of gap up and I'd love to see, uh, you know, something big, like up towards the, the 15 level, which is pretty much where it peaked out or so. So I'll put a line at 15, um, which, you know, if it were to ramp up there, I'd be looking for a blowout move, look left, maybe exhaust out at this 15. What did it top out at? Let's see. 15, 19 or so. Something like that. 15, 20s, ideally. Like if it gaps and goes 14, 80, 15, 20, sits back, I'm looking for a fade. If it has a weak open and it opens, you know, something like you know, down here at 1350s or so, it flushes out, starts to come back and consolidate for a red to green move. I'm interested in that. So those are the two ways that I would trade it. Some sort of gap out, blow, uh, gap out, gap up, blow out and fade, or some sort of weak open rally and, and red to green. That would be the two trades I'd be ready for and likely trade. Mara was great, little choppy. Um, good action, but I didn't, I didn't pay too much attention to it. I traded a few times, good entries, good covers, but it didn't really amount to too much. But I do think between Mara and Riot, <clears throat> we have a pretty big trade coming. There, there's going to be consolidation days like this. And the, the difficult part I would say with the market right now is like, you look at this, you look at UPST, you look at all these names and you're like, oh, that was so easy just to fade it. And yeah, it was on a swing. Right, you had to take the overnight risk because a lot of times he's gapped down and then it's just like this all day, right? And if you're trying to trade that, you know, you look at the daily chart and yeah, it looks good. It would have been nice, but intraday it's totally different. And that's an example like right here. You know, what are you gonna do with this? And same thing with Mara. So you're you're gonna go in with an idea, but you don't know if that's a consolidation, you know, kind of an inside sort of day, or if it's gonna be the day that it rallies or unwinds. And so just make sure that you don't oversize getting back to my conversation with NBOS. If you start to get a little aggressive and add, 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 you know, you might get popped on one of these little moves before the move ends up coming. So just be aware of trying to force what you think should happen if it's not happening. But I'd watch Bitcoin. I'd watch what's going on with that. And I think we're going to have a, a very nice, um, potential mean reversion type situation if it continues to unwind where, you know, down, 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 gaps down, 
flushes and then you know rallies back up. We've seen it a million times. We always get prepared when the market gets like this. Um, and you know it's always frustrating when it's a soft landing and then it slowly rebounds. I like that flush, you know, flush everybody out and then aggressive rebound. And I do think that at some point we're gonna have that. We, we need that sort of gut check. It's not just gonna go, I mean, I guess it might, but typically it's not just gonna go down, 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 and then up, 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 up. It's gonna go down, 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 make everybody feel good and then flush everybody out. That's my goal, we'll see. Um, but that's the plan, Mara. I think we're gonna have great trades there. DLO has been a nice little grinder. Um, the liquidity might be an issue, but um, what I look here, you can see this wick. So we had an 1890 low, and then we had basically an 1880 low. So to me, we've got some support in the 1880s. So as, if we go back and retest at 1880s, I'd be looking for the red to green move and potential of a one to two move up. Otherwise, if we gap up and we kind of push out towards the mid 20s, high 20s, I'd be looking left, see if we reject for the unwind of potentially one to $2. So the point here is I think we're gonna have a near term one to $2 move. I'm thinking $2 move would be ideal. I just wanna wait for it to tell me which way it wants to go and I wanna join that trade. So again, I'm not taking sides, I'm not saying long, short, I don't have a bias, but I do think that we're gonna have a $2 move in the near term. Uh, FTCH, nice unwinder. Uh, and, uh, I think that, uh, and I missed this one. It was, a, it was nice. It was, uh, you know, a gap down obviously on, on the news, on the earnings. And if I can get there, there we go. So that was, you know, straight down. And then if you kind of looked left, this is where I fumbled obviously, but you know, looking at where the peak was over here and, you know, I guess maybe I drew that a little too perfect, but We'll go under this support level right over here. So if you look at this action, right? You can see that it's absorb, 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 absorb. You know, in pretty much that same area, it's all just soaking, right? So when it comes back up and retests that, it exhausts through there and unwinds. Perfect setup, beautiful, you know, morning shove. And I always look for, you know, in this case, it was like around three, 280s or 320s, you know, like a 20 cent move above and beyond. And so it, it worked perfect. So tomorrow, um, you know, on a, on a Monday morning kind of flush, I'd be looking for potential reversal back up to that, that level. So I'd love to see it open 10, 20 cents down, flush out, and then, then come back for the rest of the day. We'll see what happens, but that would be the, the goal. Um, then next on failed follow through setups, uh, as you guys know, fell follow through, it does not mean just uh, I'm looking to short. I want to see it push and then I want to see the failed follow through setup. And you guys know failed follow through is some sort of exhaustion move, comes back, retest stuffs, and it starts to kind of bounce on this, this baseline, this support level. And then once it unwinds, I'm interested in that fade. So I want to see a couple of exhaustion moves and then fail. It did have good support. It held pretty well over here. So I, I wouldn't get, you know, all aggressive. But if it starts to break down and has trouble at 23, I think we'll have a nice unwind. If not, and it starts to firm up over 25s, be patient, have a big picture idea. Because it could hang around like TTOO. TTOO feels like Mullen, I've said that a couple times now, where you know we had this kind of move and then everybody's like, oh man, this should have died and it's you know breaking out back towards highs. So, um, this one, there's definitely good support at 40 cents. Um, if you look at the daily, you know, we talk about these wicks all the time and you know, you can kind of see that we've had a couple, a couple bases and just because it went under, that doesn't mean anything, right? Sometimes they want to go and do that gut check and then reclaim it. And that's exactly what happened on Friday. And if you go back and you look, you see the gut check off the open comes right back up and over. So that's pretty much voided, right? It flushed and reclaimed. And that's exactly what we talk about on the regular. So good action throughout the day. You know, some pretty clean failed follow through setup and flush, then it starts to come back. You got this failed follow through setup again and flushes, but it's still hanging around. So ideally 60, 62 blow off uh, and then pulls back. <clears throat> I think 
a lot less risk this time than the first time going up when it's kind of blue skies. There's probably going to be some overhead, you know, um, you know, inventory or, or whatever in the in the mid to high 60s. But uh, we'll see if it, if it stays firm over 60s after, you know, if it goes 60, 62, slams back to 58, starts to firm up at 60. I don't want to be fighting that. And these are very easy to churn your commissions. So for me, I'm looking for the big picture move. I'm not looking for every move. You're going to commission yourself to death. Uh, JTAI, wild one. And you can kind of see this exhaustion move over here. Not necessarily something that I would you know, want to trade. But you can see how they kind of work out the shorts and then kind of just fades off. So <clears throat> I would be hopeful of some sort of morning shove. Um, you know, if you just kind of draw a line under support, we're pretty much there. And then if you draw a line over, you know, this is where the prior top was and this base. So I would love to see some sort of exhaustion move into 650, 670s on low volume and then just kind of fade off back towards four. There's a good chance that it just unwinds. That said, be cautious. It's still thin. And, uh, you know, we've seen this, these a lot of times, sometimes they just have this one and done. Otherwise that was the trap day. And then it just kind of has that secondary kind of squeeze later on. So I want to be aware, be cautious of that. Other than that, we've got the continuation side of things, more so the long ideas, nice charts, breakout idea potentials, uh, and, uh, two that are of interest, relatively low volume. Uh, but notable nonetheless. So VCIG, I have super, super small. Um, I had traded it uh, the other day and um, I stayed with it, but uh, nothing that's too exciting. It just has a huge history. So I just wanted a small batch on just in case we get to some abnormal volume and then I'll see it faster than most people and then I can add. Um, but nothing that I'm excited about. I'd want to see it build over four or 450 before you know, I start getting excited that maybe we have another one of these kind of crazy moves. But uh, other than that, PLCE on the daily chart, pretty clean breakout uh, setup here as long as it stays over eight. You know, I'd be watching dips, 780s, eights or, or something like that for a potential breakout, 850 or nine. And then EZFL, um, pretty thin, pretty thin name for sure. Um, nothing too, too exciting, but definitely of interest. No position. No position on PLOC, no position on this, but uh, I'd be watching just in case it continues to soak versus that four level for a potential breakout. Uh, and that's it. Most of the continuation kind of ideas will be once the market bounces. And, and if that's the case, then the NEO, XPEV, UPST, U, um, PLTR, IONQ, you name it. All of those baskets that I've gone over a million times. Um, but that's it. So. I hope you guys have a good rest of your weekend. Hopefully this scan was helpful to you guys. Once again, please leave some ideas for uh, what you'd like to see me cover. Uh, I'm always looking for fresh ideas, especially when the market's the same old, same old, same old, same old, uh, instead of me just repeating the same old, same old, same old, same old. Uh, and then last but not least, Avidity Fitness. We will have the link in scan. I hope to see you guys uh, there. I'm going to try to up my game on the Tuesday nights. Usually, um, if I go in the morning, sometimes I skip. Uh, I will make a solid effort to do my best to be there on the days that I can. Um, but uh, otherwise, we've got a great group of guys that show up all the time and ladies. And um, that's it. So, we'll see you guys in the room on Monday.